Hello my YouTube friends, Dr. Chembe here. We continue looking at uh, first order transient circuits and uh, we discuss the examples. So I've got two questions that are going to be in the uh, natural response and then we look at the first response. So for the first example that we have is that we've got a switch in the circuit has been closed for a long time. What it means uh, when we say a long time, it means that the circuit has reached steady state and when the circuit has reached steady state means all the values have stabilized so the circuit has been closed for a long time before opening at time t is equal to zero and what you have to find is find the current i1 um, and i2 that is at time is equal to zero minus before the switch is opened and then um, i1 and i2 when the switch has just been opened and then I1 at T, uh, which is a current through the inductor for the time is greater or equal to zero, and I2 uh, for time is greater uh, or zero plus. And then we also need to explain why I2 as zero minus is less than, uh, is not equal to uh, I2 as zero plus. Now, let's see what we obtain. Okay, so what we look at now is that uh, we know the switch has been closed for a long time, meaning at time t is equal to, uh, at time t is less than zero, that is before the switch is opened, what we have is the capacitor, the, the inductor here is going to act as a short circuit, and therefore um, for us to find the currents I1 and I1 and I2, we simply have to first find the total resistance in the circuit, and find the total current in the circuit and then use the current division rule to find the currents. So the total resistance in this case is going to be equal to, we know we've got the 2K that is parallel to the 6K uh, resistor and then these two resistances will be added in series to the 500 uh, ohm resistor to give us a total of 2000 ohms or 2 kilo ohm resistance. Having found the total current, then we can apply Ohm's law to find uh, the total resistance, sorry. We can apply Ohm's law to find the total current. So the total current IT is then going to be equal to the voltage, which is the source voltage over the total resistance. And what we have here is 40 over 2000 and that simply gives us 0 0.02 amps or we can take it as 20 milli amps okay so since we know the total current in the circuit and we know that this total current is going to split here we simply apply a uh, current division rule and therefore i1 at zero minus uh, is going to be equal to uh, 2000 over the sum total of the resistances which in this case is 8000 which is 2 by 2 plus uh, 6 and then this multiplies by the total current in the circuit and we obtain as 5 times 10 to the power negative 3 amps or we can take this as 5 milli amps and then the current also in uh, the second uh, resistor or the current I2 using the same principle is going to be equal to uh, 6000 divided by 8000 multiplied by 0 0.02 and this is going to give us 0 0.015 amps which we can take as simply 15 milli amps this then implies that um, i1 at uh, 0 minus is equal to 5 milli amps and i2 at 0 minus is equal to 15 milli amps which we can uh, save as the solution for the first uh, question that we are asked to find. So I1 at 0 minus is 5 milliamps and I2 
at 0 minus is equal to 15 milliamps. Now, let's look at solving the second uh, question. When the switch is open, what we remain with is simply uh, an inductor connected with two resistances uh, that are in series connection. And therefore, we've been asked to find the current I1 uh, at 0 plus and the current I2 at 0 plus. This is just when the switch has been opened. So we know that uh, an inductor uh, opposes instantaneous change of current. So what is going to happen is that the value for the uh, the current uh, at I1 0 plus is going to be equal to the current I1 at 0 minus, which is going to be simply 5 milliamps. This is the current through this uh, inductor. And then when we go to finding the current I2 at 0 plus, this is simply the opposite of the current that is flowing, that the current I1, uh, meaning minus I1 at 0 plus, which is going to give us uh, minus 5 milliamps as the current value for I2 0 plus. Question number two has been solved. When we look at question number three, again, it follows the same. We are to find I1 at T, uh, meaning at uh, for, for time T is equal to zero. Now, what we are saying is, um, in this case, we know the value of the current already uh, at time T is just after the switch has been opened, which in this case is 5 milliamps, but then we all only need to find the time constant, uh, which is L over R. And when we find the time constant, in this case, we've got L, which is 400. Um, it's in millihenries meaning you multiply that by 10 minus 3. Sorry for that. And this is divided by the resistance. In this case, you have the total resistance, 8 times 10 to the power 3 uh, ohms. And this then gives us the solution to be 5 times 10 to the power negative 5 seconds. 1 over tau which is simply going to be equal to 20,000. This is just to simplify our solution because we know our final value, if we come to finding our I1 at T, must be equal to I1 at 0 plus E exponential or minus T over tau and therefore, if we have this 1 over tau already solved, giving us 20,000, it simplifies our solution. So our solution is going to be simply 5, which is in a milliamps, 5 uh, E minus 20,000 T milliamps. And that's our solution for time T is greater than 0 greater or equal to zero. That is uh, the value of the current I as a function of, of time. If we go further to look at number four, we find that I2 at T uh, for T is equal to zero plus. Again, it's simply going to be the opposite. If you remember, we have got I2, which is going to be the opposite of I1. Since we found I1, at t, which is equal to uh, 5 uh, my e minus 20,000 t milliamps. Therefore, our I2 is going to be the opposite of this one. And therefore, uh, when we come to finding I2 at t, we simply get our minus I1 at t is equal to minus 5 e minus 20,000 t uh, 
amps solution for number four when it comes to five where it is saying why i2 at zero minus is not equal to i2 at zero plus the reason is the current in the resistor changes instantaneously uh, meaning the switching forces i2 at zero minus to be equal to 50 milliamps and i2 at zero plus to be equal to minus 5 milliamps. The second example, still on source free response, the question says the switch in the circuit has been closed for a long time. And um, so we're looking at the same principle, long time, and it is open that time t is equal to zero. Find vt for time is greater or equal to zero and calculate the initial energy stored in the capacitor. So the circuit has been closed for a long time. And now let's see. Um, what value of voltage the capacitor has so during this period we are saying the circuit has been closed for a long time what will happen is that if the circuit is closed for a long time then the capacitor will have been fully charged and then it's going to act as an open circuit it will act as an open circuit and when it acts as an open circuit then we have to find the voltage across that open circuit uh, to get the voltage across the capacitor in this case since the voltage in parallel circuits is the same the voltage drop across this resistor is going to be zero because there's no current flowing through it as there's an open circuit here so where the current is flowing is in this circuit and if we get the voltage drop across the 9 ohm resistor then we'll have found the voltage that is across the capacitor and we can find that by using uh, voltage division and if we apply voltage division um, if you apply voltage division, what we get is that the voltage across the 9 ohm resistor is going to be equal to 9 over um, the sum of the resistances, which is 9 plus 3, and that multiplies by the 20 volts uh, source voltage, and this will give us 15 volts. So at the moment, we are saying um, <clears throat> that the voltage v uh, c at time is equal to zero minus is equal to 15 volts that t is less than zero and this is the voltage that stays the same because we know that uh, after the switch is um, opened the capacitor refuses instantaneous change of voltage therefore when we come to finding the voltage also at t is uh, zero plus then the voltage will be the same that is the voltage across the capacitor at zero minus will be equal to the voltage across the capacitor at zero plus which is going to be the same 15 volts when we look at the time t is greater than zero or at the time when the circuit has just uh, opened what we are going to remain with is just a, cap uh, a resistor uh, 9 ohm resistor and 1 ohm resistor uh, in series with uh, a capacitor which is a 20 microfarad capacitor which has a, an initial voltage value of 15 volts uh, which we calculated previously <coughs> excuse me and then um, if we simplify it further we get our equivalent resistance in this case which is going to be equal to simply 10 which is 9 plus 1 it gives us 10 ohms which is the resistor value across here and we've got a 20 microfarad capacitor so to get our time constant tau then we have to get um, our value is RC which is simply uh, 10 which is the resistance multiplied by the uh, value of the capacitor which is 20 uh, times 10 to the power negative 3 and that gives us uh, 0 0.2 seconds 0 0.2 seconds and that is our <coughs> our uh, time constant therefore uh, the voltage across the resist the capacitor for time t is greater or equal to 0 which is vc at t is equal to 15 which was the initial value that we found e uh, minus tau t over 
tau, which in this case our tau is 0 0.2 and we've got uh, 15 E minus 5 T volts. And that gives us the solution for the voltage uh, through the voltage across the capacitor at time t is greater or equal to zero. For the second question where it says find the initial energy stored in the capacitor, uh, we find the initial energy stored in the capacitor by half CV squared. And in this case, our values, are, we've got the capacitor value, which in this case is 20 uh, millifarads. Uh, that multiplies by 3 and then the initial value of the capacitor voltage was 15 so we get that as 15 squared and we get our initial energy to be 2.25 joules uh, the next questions we're going to look at are going to be the questions for uh, a step response uh, these has been two good examples for source-free response, both for uh, uh, an inductor and a capacitor. So if you follow these two and solve other questions, you'll be able to uh, get to solve uh, many other questions in source-free response. And the next examples I'll discuss are going to be uh, uh, step response. Subscribe to the channel and enjoy the work. Good day.